So now let's look at how a D-latch a D latch works. So here you can see here the D latch can be considered as two inverters back to back connected together with a switch here. So the switch is on when the clock is one. So when the switch is on, the input here can travel through the first inverter and go to the second inverter. Right? When the switch is off, this occurs when clock is equal to zero. So the feedback loop is now activated. So whatever input was in stored in the latch here would continue on right so it doesn't matter what the input here is because this switch is open so so now the timing diagram um the d latch has to obey the setup and hold times before the data can come out properly so in order to guarantee adequate time to get the correct data at the first inverter input before the switch opens, the data must be given a specific time and this is known as T setup before the clock goes low again. So here the setup time is defined here as the data. This is the setup time when the data needs to be stabilized and the data in order for the data to come out so that for the setup time the data has to be present here before the clock for a certain period of time so the setup time is before and the whole time is how long you must hold the data so that the data comes out as a valid output at Q right so setup is before the clock and hold time is after the clock if you violate the setup and hold time this can cause metastable problems or out chaotic output okay so this is the diagram so here as you can see here the setup time here is defined as the time the data needs to be on or high before the clock turns high and the whole time is the data still needs to be on after the clock has reached the high value so the time which the time defined is the time from the clock to the output so this is the propagational delay so the time is known as the time from the clock to q so here for this one the d is low so this is the setup time and this is the whole time and this is the t clock to q so you can define the clock to q into two which were the propagational time to go from high to low or from low to high depending on the input okay so now we have uh, another another static latch this is the set there are various types of various types of D-latch circuit and usually we can use a single phase clock right so the first diagram shows the use of a weak inverter with a the weak inverter is defined as an inverter with a low W over L to allow the removal of feedback loop X gate but retain the static latch function okay so here you have the transmission gate this is the transmission gate and when the clock is high the d passes through and this one when clock is high the clock bar is zero so the the output here will be the input will be transmitted to the output here and the inverter will invert the output and this can help to retain the signal inside the loop okay 
So in circuit B, you have two of them connected back to back. And the difference here is that you have an inverter. So in between, so this is the input 0. And this will become 1. And this is 1. And if you want the actual output, you have to put it into an inverter. So then you will get D equals to the Q will be equals to the D. Okay. So the implementation here, as you can see here, this implementation, is, this is the inverter. This inverter is a bit special as they added the clock node. So the clock node here is an added uh, transistor both at the PMOS and the NMOS. So if, what does the clock do? So if the clock is high, so let's say D is 1, this is 1, so this is 1, and the clock is high. So the clock is high, this node will be pulled down to 0. Okay? And the reverse, when, when D is 0, and the clock, is zero so clock is clock is high and clock bar will be zero so this one will be on and this is on so the output will be pulled up so the output will be one okay so this it can be used to implement the active state latch this kind of schematic all right so you can avoid clock skew you may have clock skew here because you have clock at one gate and then the, another clock at the second gate so this clock skew problem can be solved by using by using buffering in clock net so you use inverter buffer to generate the negative clock and transmitter gate gate buffer for true clock. So inverter buffer is just connecting an inverter and transmission gate buffer means that you connect it to a transmission gate. This is the transmission gate. So con construction of a D register as you can see the D, D register is actually um, edge triggered so edge triggered register actually consists of two D latch connected back to back right and the register timing so let's see here when you have the edge triggered register you can cause it to be level triggered so the level triggered mean that it will work either at the positive edge of the clock or the negative edge in this case this this register is positive edge so look let's look at the output here so the d the q will reflect what is the d whenever the clock is high it goes to high and at the positive edge so it will evaluate the function so this it will evaluate d and will come it out at q and at the next positive edge right of the clock the q will follow the d so the data must be valid um, based on the setup and hold time just like in your latches Okay, you can also have a negative edge uh, D flip-flop and this, this negative edge circuit, the master latch receives the input D until the clock falls from high to low, at which point it will set the data in the master latch and send it to the output Q. Right, the same way this has two blocks, this is the master And this is the slave. It's two block D 
flip flop connected back to back and this is negative edge triggered and as you can see here is negative edge triggered because over here this one is activated by clock and clock bar a sheet schmidt trigger circuit the schmidt trigger circuit it has a characteristic as an inverter but it has different switching threshold so if an inverter you only have one line and this will go up and down at the same line for Schmidt trigger it occurs like a hysteresis so you can see here it has one one curve when it goes from high to low and one another curve when it goes from low to high this can be done by using the inverter this is the inverter and connecting two extra transistors here and the transistor at the output so this uh, Schmidt trigger circuit has a uh, hysteresis effect and if V in is increasing it has a high threshold voltage and if V in is decreasing then it has a low threshold voltage so this is the output of the circuit so when you increase the in right you will follow this and when you decrease the in to be threshold you it will follow another curve clocking strategies so clocking strategies uh, BLSI system universally make use of storage elements and state with clock to control the sequencing. So this block diagram shows the block diagram of finite state machine, right? Where the in the output is dependent on the input and also depending on the state. So in uh, today's microprocessor, a lot of them are known as are broken down into a pipeline system whereas where the D registers are contacted with the logic one block and they can be broken down into several blocks and this is pipeline system and the idea is breaking into several blocks is that each block can be optimized instead of putting it as a whole big block Pipelining. Pipelining system typically has registers separated by communicational logic and the minimum cycle time is obtained by by adding TQ which is the clock to Q output delay plus TD which is the worst case delay and TS is the setup time delay of register B. So pipeline system comes from the pipeline in manufacturing so for example if you want to make a car right you first have to have the body and then you have the complete system so instead of having one block directly to the car you can break it up into three steps when you break it up into three steps you can do parallel processing so for example this is line one and you have another line two and the line two can do parallel processing at the same time okay so the, um so this So in this case, it will take instead of taking instead of taking so each one this is let's say one one block is one second. So to complete three cars, 
complete three cards to complete one car to complete one car it takes three seconds so by logic it should take three for three cars it should take three times three which is nine seconds but by using pipelining in order to (um) to complete three cars right you will only need one two three and this one is another step because this will complete and this is another two steps so one two three four using pipelining three cars can be finished in five seconds so you have a power or a a time saving method so the same way for the pipeline system here we will break the combinational logic into several different blocks or chains so this can allow us to increase the frequency in the super pipeline or super scalar machine so we the idea is that you split long combination logic blocks into smaller combination blocks which can run in parallel so sometimes this over improves the overall frequency of the profess processor but sometimes it adds some delay penalty okay however in a pipeline because there are many the there are clocks running the same clock has to run at different registers so sometimes there will be clock skew clock skew means that the clock doesn't arrive at the same time so maybe this is the clock at m1 there will be another clock it will try to follow the same clock here this is the clock at m2 so there will be still be slight delay here so this delay names as clock skew so clock tree distribution i've done this so i will skip this part so let's look at the typical layout for the d latch circuit as you can see there are many ways of doing the layout so here we use this kind of gate to the inverter with an added transistor and this will make real a compact layout you can also use transmission gate here both the the input and the storage is using transmission gate and the last one is the conventional delay circuit you can shrink it even more and make it less complicated